Canada's men's national soccer team refused to play a World Cup warm-up game on Sunday over a contract dispute. The game against Panama was cancelled just hours before kickoff. Fans were already on site. Canada Soccer says it's working with the players now to resolve the issue. Our intention has always been and continues to be to come up with a solution as soon as possible. Players released a letter saying negotiations over a new deal have been unnecessarily prolonged. They want a review of broadcast and sponsorship contracts, plus 40% of World Cup prize money. Fans outside the stadium in Vancouver gave us their reaction to the abrupt cancellation. It cost us money coming here from the ferry and the bus, and you know it was a long trip. And now the game's canceled again, just what a couple hours before the match starts. So terrible, and there's 20,000 dis you know disappointed people here. It's unfortunate for the fans, but uh, they have to get this resolved, and whatever uh, needs to happen for that to occur, that's that's the best choice. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a bad look. I mean, we just finally got the World Cup and a match in Vancouver. We finally get to see some excitement for the beautiful game in our country, and this is what happens. Well, for a closer look at all of this, John Molinaro joins us now from Toronto. He's a soccer journalist and the founder of TFC Republic, which examines Canadian soccer in depth. So good to get your voice on this this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, Jennifer. First, let's talk timing of this contract dispute and the fact that the game was actually cancelled, because we see this kind of threat being made other times. What, what, do you, what is your take? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a poor timing, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, I'm not sure why this couldn't have been resolved months ago. I mean, I think the, you know, Canada was certainly trending in the right direction. And I think Canada soccer had to have known that the men's team stood a good chance of qualifying for the World Cup. And my understanding is that really the, the talks over the over sort of the, the pay issue really only began in March. Um, it should have begun, you know, long before then. I think they could have, should have anticipated quali Canada qualifying for the World Cup just with how they were playing. And so the fact that it was left until now, essentially, uh, <laughs> to, to, before this Panama game, to, to still not being worked out, uh, it really sort of asks, it leaves you to ask questions as to why it got to this point when really it should have been resolved long ago. And the issue's over revenue, right? So what are the players asking for and how does it compare in terms of their demand to what other countries are already doing? Yeah, so the, the national federations, soccer federations, they get sort of a, a awarded prize money from FIFA for, for playing at the World Cup. Just getting to the World Cup is roughly about $10 million US. And the, the more, the farther you go in the tournament, then the more prize money you get. Now, all that money goes to the Federation, but obviously they're going to split that with the players. And the players are asking uh, 40%. Um, you know, I've seen some national teams get a lower percent. I've seen some national teams get a higher percent of that uh, prize money. And so, But 40% seems to be in line with what a lot of nations are, are getting. So it's not terribly outrageous ask for the Canadian men's team. And in a letter issued by the players yesterday, they noted a joint contract with the women's team with equal compensation. How important is the unity we're seeing there? Yeah, I think that's really important. I think that's one of the sort of things about this uh, entire situation that maybe is getting overlooked is that, you know, the, the, the men to a certain extent are fighting for pay equity for the women as well. Um, so I think that's certainly, I think that sort of strengthens their case. Um, it's sort of, uh, you know, just from a PR perspective, it certainly is the right thing to do. And I think it just is um, getting on board, getting the women on board um, uh, as part of this as well. Um, I think it's just, uh, it really, as I said, it strengthens their case going forward with Canada soccer. I wonder what all of this does to, you know, we heard from some of the fans there and some are pretty upset about all of this. And, and a reminder, of course, there was that game that was supposed to be played, scheduled to be played against Iran. That was cancelled, partly due to the urging of the Prime Minister. And now this. What does this all do to really the team's reputation and fan support, in your opinion? Well, I think it. you know, I think fans have every right to be disappointed. I mean, I... I you, with all due respect to the players, you have to you have to ask the question. You know, was was canceling this game the right sort of uh, uh, decision to make? Could they not have continued to negotiate with Canada Soccer over this and still play the game? Um, you know, as far as Canada Soccer, I don't think it does their reputation any uh, any favors because this is twice now that they've had to cancel a game 
after the Iran debacle. And you have to wonder that this, you know, certainly hampers their ability to organize these games like this in the future. I mean, what nation is going to, you know, accept Canada's call after they've twice reneged on um, on playing a certain opponent? So uh, I think both sides don't necessarily come out of this situation looking all that great. And let's not forget what's at the crux of all of this. I mean, the good news getting lost in all of this discussion is that Canada's national men's team is heading to the World Cup in a matter of months. I mean, how many games are there left? And now they've they've lost one of those. I wonder what all of this does to their run-up. Yeah, it certainly hampers their preparation. You, you, the, before they leave for Qatar, there's really only two international windows in this month in June and then again in September, where they can only play, I believe it's about five games. Um, so they've already nixed this one game. They're going to play, presumably, they play two games this uh, later this month, although whether those games are going to take place, we'll find out. Uh, and then they can play twice in September. So, you know, this, this is one valuable match day that's been lost against a, a quality opponent in Panama. So it doesn't do the men's national teams any favors in terms of their preparation for the World Cup. And it really sort of puts them, uh, uh, you know, behind the eight ball in terms of uh, getting ready for, to leave for Qatar. John, thank you for uh, helping us uh, walk through some of this. It's complicated. Soccer journalist John Molinaro joining us in Toronto.